For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise, or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. Friends, I read an article in the paper the other day that so many of these uh, surviving COVID-19 patients are just in horrible pain. They don't understand why, a lot of symptoms coming and going and so forth. It was probably 35 years ago that I saw in a clinic I was working in here in Dallas, the doctors introduced me to a young woman who had a brand new disease called fibromyalgia. What causes that? Let's take a look in the next five minutes, you'll get uh, kind of an overview. Fibromyalgia is a chronic disorder characterized by widespread musculoskeletal pain, fatigue, and tenderness in localized area. It is radiating pain that's mobile. It can be in your knee, then in your hip. It can cause inflammation of the muscles that you use to move your body. Myositis, that is called. Okay, so you're beginning, yeah, that's right, I've had that. You know, if I sleep on the left side, it seems to be bad on the left side. If I sleep on the right side, fungi gravitate to heat. So that makes sense if it's a fungal condition, but it's more than just that. Fibromyalgia, according to the Mayo Clinic, doctors don't know what causes fibromyalgia, but they say it's most likely involving a variety of factors, genetics, infection, and physical or emotional trauma. We're gonna dwell on what I study, and that is infection, okay? Only to a doctor, infection very often means bacteria. Think this through now with me, okay? Let's go. Infection, infectious myositis may be caused by, and look at American Society of Microbiology, a broad range of bacterial, fungal, parasitic, and remember fungi parasitizes man, and viral agents. The most commonly reported cause of fungal my, uh, myositis is candida species. So candida albicans, tropicalis, uh, oris, there's a whole bunch, uh, 15 or so, subspecies of candida. So now we know yeast can hurt my muscles, okay? Fungal infection, uh, infections can cause pain, so says the Center for Disease Control. Pain is not uncommon in patients with fungal diseases. The symptoms of blastomycosis are similar to flu symptoms and include fever, chills, cough, muscle aches, joint pain, and chest pain. Kind of sounds like COVID, doesn't it? All those symptoms. Can fungus cause that? You bet it can, according to some prominent researchers, okay? What about prescription drugs? Can they induce pain? We must read this. The FDA has recently included a black box warning on fibromyalgia-like symptoms, including the fluoroquinolones. These are Leviquin, Cipro, and 60 other generic versions of this antibiotic. The risk of fibromyalgia with fluoroquinolones is similar to that with amoxicillin or azithromycin. The reason I published that, folks, it was published in a pharmacology journal. Who hasn't been on the z pack or Azithromax with COVID, right? That's a drug that's very often used. Could it be that as these people are getting better, their pain continues not because of COVID, but because of drugs prescribed? for COVID, okay? And then there's this, statin drugs and pain. Are you on statin drugs? This comes out of a journal of clinical immunology. Statin-induced muscle disorders are not rare. A well-recognized adverse effect of these drugs is muscle toxicity. So folks, if you've had COVID and you were miserable, and by the way, oh, and you're still, now you have arthritis type symptoms, neck, back, leg pain, etc. If you've taken statin drugs, if you took Cipro or uh, you know any of these antibiotic azithromycin is a common one used for COVID, we must start thinking, okay, all these things put together is likely the reason for my muscle fiber pain, fibromyalgia. I'll never forget the young woman I saw with the doctors at one of the big hospitals out here in the late 70s worked at the medical school out in Fort Worth. And after she started getting better, why? I thought, what can we lose? Let's give her some antifungal drugs, wondering if that paper was right. Candida is the most common fungal species that induces fibromyalgia-type pain. 
So we gave her Diflucan and Nystatin, and we changed her diet to the Kaufman diet. This was 30-some years ago, and she got better. She introduced me at the medical school, and doctors were taking notes. Very, very exciting time. Always talk to your doctor, friends. That's what this show is all about. If you've ever lived or worked in a moldy environment, been on numerous antibiotics, even in your younger years, or you have or you're taking statin drugs now, tell your doctor you suspect them as being involved with your muscle fiber pain. We call it fibromyalgia. It's a problem. It was a little problem 40 years ago. It's a big problem now. Just think, fungus or drugs might be causing it. Hope that helps. You know, the great prostate hoax, prostate and fungus, all these books I talk about, folks. Someone has finally put a book together that incorporates all of that for men with prostates, right? Healing the Prostate, what a great name of a book. Joining me right now is a, is a dear buddy of mine for the past decade or so, Dr. Mark Stengler, uh, doctor of the decade, according to the International Association of Top Professionals. Welcome, Dr. Stengler. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me back on, Doug. What, you know, years and years, when you write a book, I am so enthralled with the way you write. How long did it take you and why? Of all the subjects, could have been eardrum, could have been forehead, healing the prostate, why that? Well, usually books take a lot of people about a year to write. I kind of work like a madman uh, day and night for a couple of months, and that's, that's how usually I write my book. Mm. Yeah, me too. Why the prostate? Is there a particular problem? I'm an old geezer. I mean, I'm 71 years old, pushing 72, but I feel better than most guys. But I got to tell you, Dr. Stengler, I have long thought that prostate infections, much like lung infections or skin infections, have much to do not with bacteria, where all physicians say they do, but rather with fungi. Is there an argument to be made with prostate or bladder infections in men and fungus? Oh, without a doubt. Matter of fact, uh, in men, when there's prostatitis, inflammation or infection of the prostate, um, it's only a small percent of cases where it's just directly bacterial. Uh, the majority of the cases, especially in chronic prostatitis, are fungal. Uh, there's a small uh, percent that are viral, but most are fungal. And so the average doctor out there actually isn't aware of it, although it's in the published literature. And so if you keep giving antibiotics, what happens is, and that feels better temporarily, maybe for a few days a week. Why? Because antibiotics do have this anti-inflammatory effect. But, of course, it actually worsens the problem because then you're getting an overgrowth of the fungal organisms, which are creating the inflammation, the pain, the urination problems. And so the problem continues on. So man has frequent urination, getting up at night, pain in the pelvic region, pain in the rectal area, very frustrated, you know, they're trying to yeah. complete their daily activities, and all these symptoms are going on, and all they get is antibiotics and pain medications, but if you get them on an antifungal approach, an antifungal diet, low in sugar, antifungal, antifungal herbs and spices, uh, sometimes medications, um, you can turn around with a matter of a couple of weeks, something is going on for months. Yeah, you told me one time that um, sometimes this requires a bit of experimentation. Put a man on Nystatin, it's really a drug that's been around 70, 80 years, and it doesn't have horrible side effects, change their diet. And often guys watching this, or women watching this who are in love with men who have this problem, they find out in a week or two, wow, relief. They get up in the morning and say, honey, you're not going to believe this. I didn't get up last night. So as a naturopathic medical doctor, you guys have to understand this education. He understands phytoplant nutrients and also medications. So here's a doctor that really knows a lot about this. What are two or three of your favorite antimicrobial herbs or phytonutrients that may help along with the diet chain? Well, definitely what I found to be effective, and I use a lot virtually every day in my practice for a wide variety of health conditions, acute and chronic. Love oregano, different oregano extracts out there, very powerful. Um, lately, Doug, I've been using a lot of berberine. Now, people hear about berberine as an herb for antibacterial. It's used a lot, actually, to help blood sugar levels, yep. you know, which, of course, feeds in the fungus. Yep. But if you look at it, there's good research showing it has good antifungal properties as well. So I've been using a lot of berberine with patients and then using various probiotics, actually, to keep the bacteria balanced in check. Part of your immune system's way of keeping the fungal organisms in check, not just in the gut, but in areas like the urinary tract, like the prostate, for example. Isn't it fascinating, Dr. Stengler, how we're 
reading the same scientific literature, you and me, and we discover that, you know, depression may have a gut etiology, right? It's all about the gut. Or a skin that doesn't heal properly, it's all about the gut. And when you think about what do we do with food and soda pop and alcohol, we swallow them. And so it ends up in the gut. Is there a gut prostate link? Men need to hear this. Oh, without a doubt. You know, unfortunately, the average American man's eating, you know, way too many simple carbohydrates, simple sugars, feeding the yeast, creating inflammation. Not enough of the omega-3 fatty acids, which naturally studies show reduce inflammation of the prostate. And so men are setting themselves up for a problem, add the alcohol in, uh, other lifestyle factors. And that's why the average man in America has a chronic prostate problem. So while we use the herbs, we use sometimes the medications uh, for the antifungal. I'm not a big fan of the medications used for prostate enlargement. They can have all sorts of side effects, sexual dysfunction and uh, dizziness and fatigue and stuff. But um, what we, have, we do with the patient, when we get them on the supplements, sometimes antifungal medications, that helps very quickly. But the diet is the key for long-term success, or else they're very prone to relapse. His book is called Healing the Prostate. Dr. Mark Stengler, we appreciate your time. I bet there's not one patient who walks into this office and says, could I have prevented this? Dr. Stengler, thank you very much. Thank you. In my microscope days, Aileen, you used to look down two oculars at something that you wanted to amplify that's a microscope. And I remember one time my right uh, ocular was bad. I couldn't see very well. And the teacher came over and cleaned off both ends of it and said, you had a fungus on that lens. Hmm. After she put it back on, I saw perfectly through there. Folks, do we have fungus inducing uh, vision problems or floaters in our eyes? I think so. I think many of us do. Uh, fungal floaters, they are sometimes called. I'm sure bacteria can float also, but I think most of the time it is fungus. You can almost close your eyes afterwards and see the strands of fungus. What do you do about it? There are antifungal eye drops that exist. Many times I tell people, take a month, don't eat grains, don't eat sugar, don't drink alcohol, hopefully stay off of antibiotics and see if they don't dissipate. Friends, during my live shows Tuesday and Thursday on Facebook and YouTube and so forth, uh, social media, people have asked me about citric acid. Uh, you know, what is citric acid? Isn't that a mold? And I remember years ago, uh, one of Dr. Weekly's patients came in and she had uh, Beano. She had stomach problems and she took Beano and really helped. And I looked at the label and said citric acid would generally like for like sometimes work. When you have a fermenting problem in your gut, a lot of gas, then a ferment like aspergillus, a mold, fermented might help. So let's talk about citric acid. At the end of this uh, four or five minutes, you get to decide if this is something you want, okay? Citric acid, isn't that made by fungus? Today, says Erica Jolson, she's a registered dietitian, about 99% of citric acid is made via microbial fermentation. Hmm, microbes, fungus. Only 1% is naturally derived from citrus fruit, she says. Now, when I hear citric acid, I think, gee, grapefruit, lemon, orange. Now you know, 99% of it is Aspergillus niger. It's a black mold uh, fermentation. Well, in order to ferment, you need yeast and you need sugar. Okay, let's walk down that road. Microbial fermentation, the black mold Aspergillus niger is fed sugar and it ferments into citric acid. In the U.S., citric acid is most often derived from corn since it's cheap and a subsidized crop. It's used in a, as an acidifier and a tart flavoring agent in many food products. About two million tons of citric acid is produced in the U.S. alone every single year. It's manufactured by Pfizer, a biopharmaceutical giant that once allied with Monsanto, as well as Archer, Daniels, Midland Company, and Cargill. So two million tons of this. Where does it go? I'll tell you that in a minute. Let's study Aspergillus a little bit more. Aspergillus niger is perhaps the most important fungus used in biotechnology and is also one of the most commonly encountered fungi that contaminate foods and feedstuff. I know what you're thinking, okay? I was thinking the same thing as I'm writing this. 
most commonly used, and yet it's the black mold that might grow on my fruit at home? Go with me. Many of its industrial applications have been given generally recognized as safe status. However, Aspergillus niger has the potential to produce two groups of mycotoxins, fumonisins and ochratoxins. These are scientifically listed as probable carcinogens. Now, I want to allay some of your concerns here. I studied a paper from the 1990s and one from 2002 the other day, or a couple of weeks ago, and they both said, no, Aspergillus niger doesn't make these mycotoxins. Now, Aspergillus parasiticus, there's 80 different kinds of Aspergillus. They do make these, but not Aspergillus niger. The jury's out. I've looked at some that say, yes, it does, and some that say, no, it doesn't. Once again, your decision and my decision. Let me just tell you where we find this. Citric acid is found in growing numbers of products, right? Soda pop, juices, wine snacks and candies, diet and nutritional products, nutritional supplements, pharmaceutical drugs, cosmetics, household cleaners, detergents, frozen foods, sauces, seasonings, dairy products, and ice cream, pet foods, soups, canned foods, breakfast food items. There are many natural products that contain synthetic or man-made citric acid. Folks, I don't I take nutritional supplements, but the small amount of citric acid in those doesn't concern me. It's when you eat a bowl of soup or a, a, you know, a can or a, a sack of some food that it may have citric acid in it. I tend to avoid it because I try and eat whole organic as often as I can. I hope this helps. It's an education. This is my signed edition, You Can't Have It. The book is called Accidental Blow Up in Medicine. Its author is here with me today, Dr. Simon Yu. Uh, cancer, Lyme's disease, chronic diseases. And he asked the same question that 21 years ago I named my TV show. I, as a physician, need to know the cause, said Dr. Yu. I only met him a few years ago. I, we'd have been dangerous together. We'd have met 30 or 40 years ago. It was a trip to Bolivia. When you were in medical training or after? You, yes, Army as an assignment, yeah. You were in the Army? Yeah. And as an assignment, you went to Bolivia because coca leaves, you guys were investigating all of that over there. And you, you told me this story. Well, tell them, you used to give the people anti I mean, you're a doctor. You're giving everybody anti -par You must have gone back to your Quonset hut and laughed. These people don't need anti-parasitic medicine. Well, you know, the idea is to please this... Uh, the Bolivian Indians, and a part of the program was of you know using parasite medication. And when I came back, that's when the story really changed, because I was using the same patients, IBS, are prone, I use prone natural parasite remedies like a wormwood, black walnut, club oil. That's a classic Holder Clark's herbal parasite remedies. Yep. And patient is happy, and I'm happy. <laughs> but when I came back from Bolivia, I started using. Uh, parental palm oil and mebendazole. That's what we use in Bolivia, okay. uh, issued by U.S. government. And then when the patient come back after the using parental palm oil and mebendazole, both of which kill parasite. Yeah, and uh, I hear the big difference in quantum change in sodium is that my patient will say, "By the way, my IBS went away, but my asthma also went away. By the way, my chronic fatigue, my fibromyalgia went away, my knee pain, hip pain went away." My Neurologists say, I don't have a MS anymore. The cancer patients become saver. And there are so many of these studies that I never heard of it before when I started using real you know, prescribed parasite medication. That's why I started writing this whole phenomenon called Accidental Cure. <laughs> Accidental Cure was your first book. Yes. You guys, you, you can't put this down. 30 to 50% of this book is talking about dental. Okay, when did your problem start? Oh, I just went in for a root canal. That couldn't have done it. So says your dentist. Here's an internal medicine specialist that says, oh, yeah, it could. And he has proven it over and over again. But I love the talk of the meridians. I mean, you were a classically trained physician who, to me, it's a God thing. You took a trip to Bolivia, started handing out these antiparasitic, and the people said, wow, I, I feel great. Do we all need antiparasitic medicine or antifungal medicine? 
Well, I, can, I only see really sick people. So by the time patients went to Cleveland Clinic or Mayo Clinic and major institutions and they say they don't know what's going on, they usually overlook dental problem, parasite problem, fungal problem, environmental toxins like heavy metals. They don't look for pesticide, insecticide, organophosphate, all those things. Even Asian oranges are still around in our environment. These are stuff we overlook as a part of the problem. One of the things you've helped me better understand, you, Dr. Cowden, and you know the whole group, is electromagnetic fields. We didn't have cell phones 30 years ago. We didn't have Wi-Fi 30 years ago. We didn't have smart meters. Most people don't even know they have them now. But sometimes you can equate what's going on electrically in your body to these smart meters they put right outside your headboard. Should we be concerned about electromagnetic radiation? Oh, absolutely. I think it's become a bigger and bigger problem too, except I'm not really trained on how to rectify the problems. So I have to send to the specialists right. who can maybe correct the problem. Uh, but I have to identify them. I check through the meridian system. It's a process of the elimination. So I get rid of the dental problem, parasite, fungal problem, environmental toxin. They still have a problem. Usually I'll pick up through the, what I call the allergy, immunology point in the acupuncture point. And they are very sensitive to electromagnetic fields. So well, there's only one left and I sent to the specialist who can actually correct the underlying problem. I asked Dr. Yu in the green room today, uh, do you see new patients? Because many times these doctors are so busy. And he said, here's the problem, Doug. I can fix them. And then they tell their friends and come to me. He's in St. Louis. What's a plane ride cost to St. Louis? Pick up the book first. Accidental blow up in medicine. Once you read the first three chapters, you'll totally understand the brilliance of this man. His name is Simon Yu, Y-U. He's a medical doctor. Thank you for coming in here today. I really enjoyed this. Thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, folks. Both of my doctors uh, that I had on today are authors. Of course, the new prostate book by Dr. Mark Stengler. There it is, wonderful book, wonderful man. Dr. Yu has written several books. And folks, I'm just glad you get to learn from these people that I have learned from also. Fibromyalgia, could it be a fungal disease? Citric acid, aspergillus in corn? Now, every day, folks, tune in, Monday through Friday, and just let the learning continue. God bless you. Bye-bye.